when people that have never seen my work see it in person, the look they get in their eyes when they see it, it's like watching children show up at Disneyland. Each single piece is individually cut by hand, shaped by hand, and welded on by hand. So this is probably the greatest sculpture I've ever done. Welcome to my shop. We're here in Abbotsford, BC. Um, we're about an hour out of Vancouver, BC. I rent a big shop here on a farm to build my artwork. I had a hot rod shop before this. My artwork started to take off and it became full-time work for me. Um, and it wasn't something I could do on the side with a hot rod shop anymore. So I sold out to my partners and we relocated out to here. Now we're here building artwork full-time. One of the biggest opportunities back in 2011, I received a phone call from Dollywood in Tennessee. And they were building the world's first winged roller coaster in North America, it's called the Wild Eagle. So they commissioned me to build this giant eagle. As my work started to become more popular, the opportunity arose to not be building cars and, and focus on my dream of building large scale artwork. So this is a 55 foot stainless steel T-Rex. Everything is hand formed, hand made. These sheets don't come this way. This is all, every one of these hammer marks is, um, is done with a power hammer. So it's an old 110 year old machine that we purchased from another hot rod friend of mine. And he saw me hammering using a hammer and a sandbag. He's like, holy crap, man. Like, I've got a machine that'll do that for you. And I mean, what a lifesaver it was. This is just so much hammering and texturing to do. It takes hours and hours and hours and hours and hours per panel. I'm thinking that it's probably got about three to 4,000 square feet of stainless steel just to skin it. I kind of create sculptures one problem at a time. The skeleton of the sculpture is my first problem. Putting it together and engineering it, so that's the first problem. So what I've done for this one is I've used um, stainless steel angle and stainless steel flat bar to shape the sculpture. I had these rings, you can see the rings in here, to give my overall shape for the tail and for the body. I, I kind of look at each piece of the sculpture as a problem that I have to solve. Learning it over the years in my whole career, 30 plus years of shaping metal, um, you kind of get to know it. It's like a friend after a while. You, you know that it's gonna bend this way or shape that way. Designing is consuming. That's the only way I can describe it because I live, eat, and sleep my sculptures. Everybody asks like, do you have to cut walls down to get your sculptures out? But everything I do, um, has to fit through the doorway. And it's a 12 by 12 doorway, and if it fits through the doorway, it'll fit on a truck and go down most highways and fit under most bridges. So we're pretty good there on a low bed trailer. So this is probably the greatest sculpture I've ever done. This is a almost a full scale replica of a Game of Thrones dragon. I based it on Drogon, which is the original dragon from Game of Thrones. It's designed to shoot fire. I would say the dragon has been my most complicated, uh, most detailed and most time consuming sculpture to date. He's about 12 feet tall. He's about 44 feet wide with his wings folded. Uh, spread out, they'd probably be about a 100 foot wingspan. With his tail mounted, his tail goes 30 feet in the air. Assembled, he's probably 15,000 pounds. So I started with the inside of the mouth and then worked my way around using round bar so all the teeth were shaped, bent, and ground points. Round bar for his gums, sheet metal for the inside of his mouth. Up inside is the fire system at the corners of his mouth, so I have two electric igniters and the gas tube coming out of his mouth. All the texture was done by welding and by round bar. So to make the big spikes, I bent and curved and welded together half inch round bar. And then to give it all that texture and the thickness, 
um, I just welded and welded and welded layers and layers and layers. I left the splatter and the roughness and texture to it because I thought that gave it a real, you know, kind of a horn kind of feel to it. And then these are all made by hand. So each scale is laid out on a full sheet of metal. We draw them all with ink on the table. One of the things I'm proud of is that each single piece is individually laid out by hand, cut by hand, shaped by hand, and welded on by hand. So it's a completely handmade piece. I like to use different textures uh, and colors to represent all the different layers of the skin and, and stuff. So this is all done with uh, a lots of uh, passing back and forth like this with the torch on there and as soon as I start seeing color then I move the torch and keep that color flowing it gives it more a, a feel of texture and what I was trying to create is kind of that feel of skin or leather without trying to put all the wrinkles into it these scales represent that chest armor but once you get to his belly or after his belly the scales go from armor scales to full length belly scales, which um, they've been laying out here. So you can see these patterns of paper. These will be transferred into steel and then heat treated. And these, these wrap around the belly and they get layered. And there's probably 50 or 60 of them to cover the whole belly all the way to the tip of the tail. And you can see up here, there's a structural frame that supports the wings and uh, that structural frame is built into his wing and comes down to the ground here. And eventually, where his front claw is, there'll be holes in here where anchors can be put into the concrete. His feet are designed to be removable. I can anchor him to the concrete, slip his feet back on to cover the anchor points and you don't see how he's bolted down. Not many people get to see inside my sculptures, but as you can see, it's a heavy and quite a massive structural frame inside here. A 10 inch steel pipe to support the wings and the legs of the frame. Um, yeah, just a neat perspective. Here we've got a uh, propane hookup. This will be hooked up to a manifold system, which will provide the flow of the propane to the mouth of the dragon and create the, the flame, so. My lifetime achievement goal for what I do is to be known for building the world's largest sculpture. If you do a little research into some of the pieces that have been made around the world now, they're ridiculously huge. They make my stuff look puny. So I would love to be involved in doing a piece that would not only be the world's largest, but something that would last like the pyramids, last for generations and generations. My life-size steel dragon is the coolest thing I've ever made.